Hello there, Mr. Automation again, and this time with a video on key fault secrets. And uh, let me immediately share a different screen. So basically, a viewer asked me, uh, you can create secrets inside of a key fault, but can you also create a couple of secrets at once? So there's different methods for that, by the way, but uh, I created the video for this at least, so this that's this one, and let's see how I did it, right? So what I constructed here, let me size this up. I don't want to set, yeah, sizing up. So what I did, I created the CSV file with some headers, key fault, that's the key fault name, the key name, so that will be the name of the of the of the secret. And then the value that will be the value of the secret. So this is now very secret value. Just imagine this is a password or something you want to store. This is admin account one, admin account two, admin account four, right? Like like that. So <clears throat> we have an input file. What you can also do with bicep is create a secret inside of a key fault. <clears throat> and I created a very simple example for that. And it needs some explanation. So there are a couple of parameters. So this bicep file supports some input, supports some input, I said. And um, one of them is a secret value. And that's of type secure. One of them is a key name. So that's the name of the key in the key fold. And this is the key fold name itself. So where do you want to store that secret in? So what we do on line seven is first bind to an existing resource inside of my resource group. And it's currently in my development resource group. And I provide the key fault name there, right? So that we have an object to refer to. That's called KV, key fault, right? And on line 11, we cre create a resource, a new resource. This is the object name secret. It's of type secrets. We specify a key name that we specify on input. We specify the parent, so that's where we're we going to store that secret. And we have some properties, and that's basically the secret value. And that's of type secure string. So this is a very simple bicep template that you can then call from a different layer, right? You can call this from Terraform, from Salt Stack, whatever is supported, right? I'm doing it with PowerShell, but there's many tools that can call these types uh, of templates as well. Uh, Azure Pipeline, for instance, you have a step there to call a bicep file and then you provide some input and that's basically what you're doing here. I did it different. I don't use any Azure Pipelines here currently. Um, so what I did, I created a simple PowerShell script and this PowerShell script is then calling that bicep file by providing some input, right, at runtime. The key fault name, specifically. <coughs> the key name and the secret value, right? And how do we do that? Because PowerShell needs to know how this secure uh, input works, right? Because this is not the normal string, it's of type secure. So we go back to PowerShell. So what I did, I created one parameter during runtime for the script itself, and that's the resource group you want to target, the bicep file, right? You, you run that bicep file, you need to target it to a resource group. So that's provided at runtime. And on line six, I uh, get the current working directory where the, this script lives in, the script that we're running, because inside of the same folder, I also have a secrets.csv. And we call that here, we import that CSV file here. And we do a try catch around it, made it a little bit more advanced than other videos. Normally I always write code like this, of course. So there's a try around it. If this import fails, then the script will fail as well, right? We don't continue, of course, with uh, if the import fails. So that's this part, very simple. Then on line 16, we actually have the CSV file in memory. And then we're going to loop through each line, right? Each item, each object. So for each item in all these items from the CSV file, we're going to do a try catch here as well, do it properly inside of the for each. What we do first is here, convert the password that we have inside of this file, so this value basically, this value here, this is my very secret value of 33. That one, 
we then convert to a secure string. And that's basically what this is supporting here, right? This is secure. And then here we make sure that this, what, this is what we're going to provide to that bicep file. That first that plain text string is converted to a secure string. But that's what happens here. Here I have a, a splat. I call it splat. It's just splatting, right? Splatting a command. What I do here is generate some input values for this new AG resource group deployment commandlet because this accepts some input. And um, I did that by providing it a hash table. What you can do is set all the values. So this new resource group deployment commandlet supports some inputs. And one of the inputs, for instance, is a template file. You can see that, of course. So let's, let's if you do a uh, get help, I always do MUN because I also use Linux, so and it works on Linux and Windows, so I like to use MUN. And if you click a little bit and just take one syntax, this one for instance, top one, then you will see that there's also a minus template and other stuff support this input. I honestly don't see it currently, probably I need to check some more, but it, it is there, it is there. So you can see what is supported. Now what, what I did, just provide that as an input here in a hash table, all the values that we need to use. And then when we call this commandlet, we feed it all these things. So you don't need to write the very verbose line with some backticks in it, because I have an example here. I will comment this out. This will also work if I just remove all this. And this one, of course, because this doesn't work anymore. Then we can also run this new deployment group template minus template file, right? Template file with some value, with some value there. The mode is incremental. We set the mode there as well to increment. So basically what you see here in the split is everything as an input for this command line, but the minus is stripped off, right? So resource group minus resource group, I mean, becomes resource group with the value. And then you can Feed that here to the commandlet. I, I actually created a video on how to do splatting. So uh, I would say if you don't know how it works, you can find that. I comment this out again the way it was. So now we're back to the original code. And uh, let's see. Yeah, so that, that's it basically. So we get the CSV file. You read that. You convert this specific value to a type of secure string. Then we create a, a splat. A, a hash table object with some properties and values. And then here we call the deployment itself and feed it this split. So that's it in a nutshell. Let's see if I open my browser and we go to Azure. And uh, oh, I'm already in my key fold, by the way. So this is my key fold. And here on the left, I can go to secrets. And currently, I have an, uh, two secrets here, okay? So nothing else. So when I run the script, I would expect to get secret one, secret two, secret th three, and secret four inside of my key fold with these secret values, right? These converted values. So let's see when we run this code, and perhaps I don't think we need to enable the debugger here because it's very simple code, but perhaps, I don't know. We just do it for, uh, for one entry, I would say. I press F5, we run the script. It asks me for input here below which resource group. It's my development resource group, dev. I press enter. Then we get the current working directory. Like I said, I'll show you the value here. So you see, this is my working directory where the script lives in, and then we can import based on that current working directory, the secrets.csv. You don't need to have hard-coded values there indeed. And uh, that will be stored in all. If you look now in all, you should have four entries, and we have this key fault, this key name, and this my secret value. Okay. So what we do now is convert the password, like I said. And as you can see here now, it's of type system security secure string. What we do then is create that input for that command line with this split hash table that we have now here. So if you look inside of split. It looks like this. So it holds some values. 
like the mode, like the secret, like the template file, if it's for both or not, the key fault name and the key name itself, right? And also this secret value, but you don't see the value here in plain text anymore because it's now type secure. And that is supported by the bicep file. I showed you that already there's a parameter that accepts a secure input. What we do then, I write something to the screen, what we're going to do, I guess. So we're going to create a secret in the, uh, in the key vault. And if we run this, let's see what happens. Now, I think it already run. Uh, you don't have any verbose flags enabled, so you don't see much during runtime. When you now refresh this, you see we have now secret one here. And I look inside of this version and I will see that show the secret value that this corresponds with the value I had in my editor here, right? That corresponds. So let's now stop the debugger and run everything and let's see what we get. We'll take a little bit of time. Now it's creating secret two in the key vault. Secret three and secret four. And after that, the script should be done. So let's see. Yeah. So if you now go back to the key vault and we go to uh, secrets and I refresh here, we, you see that you have more secrets now, right? Secret one, two, three, four. Okay, let's examine four, just for fun, I guess. Uh, click on the version, show the value, and you will see that that 36, of course, corresponds to what we have here, 36. So um, let's run the code again and see if it breaks anything, right? Because uh, it needs to be item potent, so to speak. And we're also going to see what happens if we change the password inside of the CSV file, you know, what happens with that secret in the key vault. So I will stop the debugger here. I will run the code again. I'll clear the screen as well. Create some real estate. I run the code. I specify the resource group again, dev. And we're going to create some secrets. And as we can see, we now have run the code again, and uh, it's creating a secret inside the key vault. Now let, let's see what happened here. So if we go to the secrets here, and we refresh and we take secret two for now, and we look at the value, it's still one version there. We look at the value, it's still value 34. But imagine that these are your admin password rights, and perhaps you need to change them every six months, right? So let's imagine that we have a new password. We just add a four here for simplicity purposes, I guess. And um, let's run the code again, let's see what happens, okay? We run it again, we specify the resource group, dev, and we wait. And it's now done, it's created a new secret inside of the key vault. Now let's see how that works inside of the key vault, right? Because a key vault has a concept of versioning. Let's see how that behaves with this file, with this uh, approach, I mean. So let's refresh here and let's take secret one now again. And now all of a sudden we have two versions. There's a current version and there's an older version. Let's look first at the older version. I show the secret value there. You see my previous password that I had, right? For this uh, secret or a value, whatever you want to call it. And you also have a current version. And if we click on the current version here and you show the secret value, you will see that now this new password has been set. Of course, you use your imagination if I now, uh, again, we're six months further and we're going to change the password again, do this and we can run the code again. And you believe me that we get like a new version there again, like here. So we have two older versions and one current version with the value. Let's run it once more and refresh this secret afterwards, secret one. So let's run this code. Um, Let's run this, resource group is dev. So as you can see, secret one already has been created. So you can inspect that value while the others are still running. If you now click refresh, you have two older versions with the specific uh, GWT, GWT, globally unique identifier. This was the first one, remember? Or the second one, I don't know which order it is, by the way. This was the first one, I think, yes. And this is then the current value the current version with an extra four inside of it. So that's that's how you can set secrets, multiple secrets at once. Uh, what you can also do is uh, if you don't like bicep, 
I don't know why, but perhaps you don't like it. There's also a set AC fault secret commandlet that supports some input. You can also play around with this and do it and run the command over and over again. I rather have a uh, bicep file, you know, like uh, this, because this is more an uh, item potent approach. PowerShell could potentially fail with an error and says that the secret already exists and perhaps you need to write some other things on top of that. And with this bicep file, you have more like a small declarative template here, you know, with no hard coded values basically. And some dynamic input here based on parameter input. And then with the PowerShell script, you can then provide that input. And this PowerShell script, of course, now reads the CSV file, but use your imagination. It can also consult the database, right? You can run a SQL database query from PowerShell. It's very easy. Collect the same information and call this bicep template. And you will have your secret, uh, uh, secrets safely managed inside of Azure because we're converting this to a secure value. So this plain text value that sits on your local system most probably don't commit this to uh, Git, of course, you know, with the, with the plain text value for the password. But use your imagination. Um, you can use this input file uh, for that. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this is it. Last sum up. We have a bicep file, very small template. Creates a secret in an existing key vault. We have a CSV file with three headers with some input, key fault name, the secret name, and the value for the secret. Then you have a PowerShell script that has one input parameter. That's the resource group you want to target this bicep file to. And then apart from that, I explained everything, right? So the CSV file setting the properties, calling the command line, and how the secrets behave inside of Azure with the versioning. And I also showed you that there's this uh, set AC key fault. You can play around with that as well if you want, but I did that on, I on purpose did it uh, not that way uh, because I rather believe in the bicep approach. That's my personal preference, I guess. Uh, so I will remove this line here. No, I'll leave it in for the demo. What you can do now, I will commit the code back to Git and I will post the link inside of the video so you can download the code and uh, have fun with it, I guess. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.